Hey guys, welcome back to Dip Switch Demos. My name is Jackson and welcome to another video with no guitar playing whatsoever. My finger is getting a little better. Um, well, it's healing quite fast. I've had the stitches out, but it is essentially still an open wound. So I kind of don't want to agitate it any more than I already have. No guitar playing for now, which sucks. I'm really hating not playing guitar, but it is what it is for now. I'll be back playing guitar as soon as I can. But um, like I said in the last video, a highly requested video to do while I can't play guitar was to do a whole video on my complete recording setup. And originally I was going to do, you know, hot, one long video on video, audio, editing, everything. Um, and I've decided that that video would just be too long, too boring, so I'm going to split it up into three things. Those three categories. Video, which is going to be today's video. Audio, which I'll do in a week or so and then editing finally. So like I said, this video is all about the video. So I'm gonna cover lights, cameras, lenses, the background generally, the kind of the general shot and composition of my videos. I think this video is gonna be really useful for you guys who maybe want to start doing YouTube or if you are just interested in my overall setup. I started um, doing YouTube with literally one of these cameras and some really simple umbrella lights. Um, they're just over there. I've still got them, um, but I've up, since then gradually upgraded every part of the uh, recording setup. So kind of it's always been done on a budget, but uh, over time I've accumulated some good stuff or some kind of medium of the range stuff. Um, and I kind of, I think the most important thing is being able to learn how to use it. Get the best out of what you've got. Because really, if you've got some good lights, and even like an iPhone, you can get some really good results. So yeah, let's first of all start with cameras. I guess the kind of meat and potatoes of the videos. I use two of these Lumix G7s. Um, very popular um, uh, YouTube camera because it is pretty affordable and it also has a flip out screen. Uh, not many cameras at this price point have a flip out screen. And like I said, I use two of them. Um, one which I'm recording with right now here and then a second one that is always on pedal cam. I use two different lenses as well. So the lens I have here in my hand is the one that I use for pedal cam is a the standard Lumix one. It's, it's one of the kit lenses. It's a 12 to 60 millimeter 3.5 f-stop I think. Uh, pretty standard, pretty wide angle. It's also got some stabilization so if you ever see some vlogs or handheld stuff it's usually with this lens. But my main lens that I use for kind of all the kind of uh, portrait shots of me and also when I'm playing guitar is the, again it's another Lumix one, it is the 25mm f1.7. And I always have the uh, f-stop as low as it can be so it can really blur out the background nicely, get some cool shots like that. I just think that's a really nice look. I love being able to blur out the background, which you can't really do with these higher f-stop uh, lenses. Especially the Lumix ones because Lumix use something called micro four thirds, micro four thirds sensors. So they're a little bit smaller than other um, manufacturers, which means that it's a bit, little bit harder to blur out the background. So really quickly, this is what the shot, the same shot looks like with my other lens. As you can see, it's a much wider shot. It's also darker because the uh, f-stop it doesn't go as low. Uh, but yeah, this is what it looks like on a much wider angle. Um, you can see my light boxes and stuff and everything going on. Um, so I much prefer the softer, more close-in look of the other lens. It also blurs out the background more. Uh, but I just thought it would be cool to show you guys the difference between the two lenses and why I use one for one job and the other for the other. So this is my Lumix 12 to 60 millimeter lens, uh, f3.5. And then my other one is the 25 millimeter f1.7 lens that we'll go back to now. Overall, I like these cameras. They're, um, well, I've got two of them, of course I like them. They're really good for the money and they are popular for a reason. Um, they get good results, especially if you've got some good lighting, you can really get some good results. They're not the sharpest. I know Sony cameras are uh, really sharp and they maybe are a bit more cinematic and they look good. Um, so I've, sometimes they're a little grainy, my Lumix cameras, but really it's fine for what I'm doing. Uh, I will probably upgrade them at some point, but these Lumix cameras are serving me well. I'll also put a kind of on the side here, a list of my settings if you're interested in getting into the settings and setting up, maybe if you've got the same sort of camera, maybe if you want to set it up the same as well, I'll let you know my settings. So that just about covers the cameras. Um, next, we'll talk about the audio. So. I know I said I was going to do a separate video on audio, but this is just going to be about my vo voice audio when I'm talking to the camera. Here we go. Let's uh, on the fly recording. Have I got this set up right? 
let's just go for it. Uh, okay, clap. So whenever you're recording with two cameras, always make sure you clap or have like a board that you can slap. It gives you two spikes in the audio file or kind of waveform that you can line the two cameras up. So just a quick tip, it's a very common tip. Uh, but there you go. So we are now recording with this camera. Apologies for all uh, my shaky hand cam and all my clothes and stuff because I do record in my bedroom if you didn't know. So there's my camera, my main camera set up over there. As you can see it's quite far away. I also have my iPad set up to monitor me. Um, so it's, if you see me looking down there, I'm not very good at just looking at the lens all the time. So if you see me looking down there, that's what I'm looking at, my iPad, just so I can see all the settings and things and what's going on. So audio, I use this little condenser mic. It's an SE Electronics um, SE 2000. I think it's quite a budget microphone as well, but it does the job. Um, I have it set pretty sensitive so I can set it reasonably far away and it just picks up my voice. I get a much better result using with this method compared to using like a little clip-on mic that I used to use. Next of all, and what I think is the most important part of any video setup is the lighting. And it's also the part that I've upgraded the most recently. So the current lights that I'm using are these uh, newer, newer um, LED panels and softboxes. I've only got a softbox on one of them because a fault, kind of a design fault of them is that once the um, softbox is on, you can't angle it down. So I've got this one at headlight, at head height, and this is what I kind of use as my key light. Uh, my main light, it's set up the brightest, and it's literally, it's only just off frame. If you can see it there, uh, now I'm gonna struggle bend it back. So yeah, it's only just out of the shot, and it's really bright, and it's really on my face. I kind of set up the whole room really uh, dark, so I turn all the lights off, I close all the curtains, I make the room as dark as I can be, and then I can control the lights with my panels. And then up there, I have more of a fill light. I don't have the softbox on it, as I said, you can't angle it down when it's on a softbox. Um, and that's just about the thir a third of the brightness to this one, and it just means that I get a bit of shadow across the face, but just it fills in some of the lines, so it's not completely dark on this side of my face. And that's pretty much it. When it comes to the main lights, that's all I use. Um, but, as you can see behind me, there's quite a bit going on. First of all, uh, I have this light. And I can't remember what people call this in the industry, um, but it's kind of a hair light. Is it called a hair light? That rings a bell. And really it just gives me like a halo effect around my hair and my kind of arms and stuff. Um, basically separates me from the background. I have it set kind of orangey just to kind of give it, make it a more warmer feel. I've not tried it kind of the same blue as this, but you know, I think the orange looks nice. Maybe orange t-shirt wasn't the best color to wear in this video, but you get the picture. And then behind that, I have another little light here, and that's what's making the background all blue. And it is an Aperture MC. It's about that big, it's tiny, I'll get it in a second. But basically, it's what I kind of use to add a bit of color to the background. I also have an app that I can control it with on my phone. Let's have a look at this, let it connect. So I can make it brighter as well. I can change the color, that's, so that's kind of gone a bit yellow. Let's make it nice and green, or red, or purple, or pink. Um, I had it on blue before. Blue's always kind of a safe bet to go with because it kind of looks good with everything and offsets some of the warmer things that are going on, like uh, these two lights here as well. Um, but pink is always cool. I like a bit of pink. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that. Um, I enjoy using it, adding a bit of color. I always like to make my videos as colorful as possible, so I kind of bump up the saturation. Maybe so it's a bit, so not super realistic, but I kind of like the look of it being super bright and colorful. It's kind of the style of the videos that I go for. Other than that, lights-wise, we have a, I have a little lamp here that just kind of makes the shot a little bit warmer in the corner, and then also a big on-air sign where my laptop's actually in front of it now, so it doesn't really do much, um, but I just kind of like the look of it. It kind of works nicely. This shot, this angle that I'm doing is kind of a new one for me. Usually I'm in front of my pedal shelves that have got fairy lights all over. Again, it's the same sort of thing, but the fairy lights blur out nicely and create some bokeh, I think that's what they call it. Basically the, the lights blur out and it looks kind of pretty and stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it. That's kind of the video setup. So thanks guys for checking out the video. If you like what you saw and maybe you found this interesting or useful if you want to get started making your own YouTube videos or you're just interested in my setup and what's going on, 
I hope that was useful or interesting for you guys. Um, hopefully my finger will be better soon so I don't have to keep babbling on so much in these videos. But I'm going to keep the ball rolling, see how things go. Yeah, and that's about it. Thanks guys very much for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers guys.